in countries all around the world, you'll find people that have a voice, people that have sovereignty. And I'm talking about actual sovereignty over their land, not this symbolic uh, tokenism that's being discussed right now in Australia. Because right now in Australia, of course, we're discussing the voice that the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, the First Nations people of our country, should have as recognised by our constitution. But what we're trying to give them, and this is again my opinion, seems to be symbolic. It seems to be a gesture of saying that, look, we've given you something and, uh, you know, that will do for now until the next debate comes around to actually if that's effective or not. But all of this uh, got me thinking about the people in the other countries around the world that have a voice. And it got me thinking about why, despite having this voice and sovereignty in other countries, for instance, people still come to Australia, all right? People from all over the world, despite their you know, race, despite their status in wealth, uh, despite, you know, their ethnicity, despite all of these things, Australia is a draw card for these people. And why would you leave behind a country where you have a voice and you have sovereignty? Now, of course, there are people who come to Australia seeking asylum, refugees who are escaping persecution, who are escaping bad conditions, who are escaping governments where people who are sovereign in that land, who are using their ethno state, for instance, against one group of people to persecute them. That of course still happens in our world today. But all these people from this melting pot of voices around the world, those who have voices and those who do not, like I have said, are coming to Australia. And I think that's because Australia represents something, as do a very small handful of other nations around the world. It represents a voice that we can all have, right? The ability for people, despite their differences, to belong to one community, to have one voice, to, to together then push that country forward into the next next era of that nation, right? That's what's happening in Australia right now. Australia is a melting pot of these ideas. Now, of course, historically, these issues that Australia faces uh, as to do with the treatment of Aboriginal uh, people, Torres Strait Islander people, the First Nations people, that treatment of these people over generations in the short history of Australia. Of course, there's questionable things. There's things which Australia does not look good when looking at that particular topic. But every country around the world has these issues. People all over the world face this. Right now we're seeing conflicts in part of the world who have been there for thousands of years between people who are neighbours. But of course there's ethnic conflict based on who owns what land, who was there first, and all these kind of nonsense that a lot of people run away from to come to Australia. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that, you know, Australia represents much more than an individual voice. It represents the aspirations of people from all around the world. And I think we should work hard to make sure that the people that are the First Nations people of this country, people who are the Indigenous Australian people of this country, should also be able to take advantage of these opportunities. Because for a long time, I've wondered why it is that people like myself, my parents migrated here from Sri Lanka, I don't look like a white Australian, but why is it that I've been able to take advantage of the opportunities that this country provides me? But at the same time, we have the First Nations people of this country who are struggling with issues that immigrants sometimes don't face at all, right? And immigrants that look like me as well. It's not about some, you know, oh, some white privilege thing. You know, this is the reality of what's happening. Like, people are coming to this country and making the most of it. And there is a real sense that certain uh, types of um, 
certain people, certain indigenous people in our country are being left behind. And I don't think that has anything to do with Australia being a racist country. I think that has a lot more to do with the historical mentality, right? Of the way this issue is discussed and debated and talked about. And for as long as this issue is talked about in these terms, I don't think there'll ever be a proper, proper solution to getting above that because there is, I believe, again, my opinion, I don't want to offend anyone. There is a group of people in this country who are very committed to keeping people, right? Letting people know that they are victims, right? Keeping people stuck in this victim mentality. Once you break free of that victimhood mentality, you can do almost anything, you know, of course, within certain other barriers that you might face. Of course, there's always impediments in the way and there's always things that people have to overcome. I'm not saying that you can just come and just, you know, go for it. Um, there's always barriers in front of anyone. But if you get rid of that victimhood mentality, which is being pushed on a lot of these communities, particularly when it comes to these debates, right? A lot of the people who are Indigenous Australian talking about these actual real world issues that they're facing, that something like, um, you know, this amendment wouldn't fix, they get pushed to the side, right? Because we're pushed in this belief that if you do this thing, if you do this symbolic gesture, it fixes all these other things. It's possible that it could, but it won't work as long as people still believe that they're a victim of something. Again, I'm going back to South Asia because that's familiar territory for me, but you have a lot of people, right, of South Asian descent, uh, let's say in India or Sri Lanka, for instance, coming to Western countries and prospering and thriving, right, getting to all sorts of different positions in the community, um, and then generationally, they're thriving as well. And it makes no sense because a lot of the time we're doing this in countries like Australia with this, you know, history of all the crazy stuff that the British did to us. And I'm telling you, like, I don't wake up in the morning thinking about the history of Sri Lanka or the past or what they did or what, what I could have had or what I could have become if the British never came or whatever it is. I don't, don't think that in that manner. I'm thinking about what we can become, or what I can become in the future because that's how we improve yes of course we got our independence and so on and there is a belonging in sri lanka where i come from but uh, you know the sri lankan politicians they have their voice the people in sri lanka are sovereign but you know we've had ethnic conflict we've had violence uh, currently in sri lanka right now people you know didn't have fuel uh, they they can't access food. They can't access all these things. So there's many many problems despite the people having you know a voice. Now that's not to demean the fact that people should have their historical connection to a land or a country recognized, and there should be a sense of ownership and belonging to a nation. Not at all. What I'm trying to point out is that despite having all of these things, the systems of government, the systems that society are structured upon can be the fundamental thing that actually gets rid of the opportunities for people to be successful. What, what, let me know what your thoughts are. Should people like myself even be talking about this issue? Uh, my belief is yes. I think all Australians should discuss this topic openly. Uh, it's a topic that's being put to all of us and, uh, you know, it should be openly discussed, should be debated. Um, it should, of course, have the leading voice on this issue from the indigenous Australian community. I think that's very important and all sides should be heard. But at the end of the day, the continuation of this tokenism, this symbolism, uh, this victimhood mentality, I don't think it bodes well uh, for this country. Uh, we should stick to what is working and that is pushing towards a unified voice where all people are treated the same uh, where there is no difference uh, between people based on certain characteristics or certain, um, you know, racial or ethnic differences. 
uh, where those things aren't enshrined in documents uh, to then be used against people down the track. Because, you know, I really don't want to see a future where this kind of thing is passed and there's a voice and there's this and that. And the people then turn around and go, well, you know, they have a voice. So let's not worry about these issues because, you know, they got the voice so they can fix it. Because I see we're heading down that path, right? Because this kind of thing that's happening right now, that can go either way. So look, everyone, this is humbly my opinion on this matter. I do wish to explore this topic more. Uh, I think it's very important. Uh, and of course, uh, I will endeavor to talk to people from different backgrounds and different communities on this issue.